Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Alors, euh, nous faisons la classe en français aujourd'hui. Um, we are doing French class today. Um, translation is arranged. Or... Yes, no, maybe. 50%. Très bien, donc je vais euh, lire le verset. Itam Gajendra Sayadapa Om oh. oh, Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om oh, Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om oh, Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Pardon, je suis un peu stressé de dire des bêtises, donc j'oublie. <rire> Euh, on fait le mot à mot d'abord. Mot à mot d'abord. Yada, Apa, Sankatam, Pranasya, Dehi, Vivasha, Yadrichaya, Aparayan, Atma Vimokshane, Chiram, Dadio, Imam, Boudim, Atta, Abhyapadyata, Itam Gajendra Sayada Pasan Katam, Pranasya Dehi Vivasho Yadrichaya, Aparayan Atma Vimokshane Chiram, 
Dadia Viman Boudim Ata Diapadiata Itam Gajendra Sayada Pasam Katam Pranasya Dehi Vivasho Yadrichaya Aparayan Atma Vimokshane Chiram Daya Viman Boudim Ata Diapadiata Itam Gajendra Sayada Pasan Katam Pranasya Dehi Vivasho Yadrichaya Aparayan Atma Vimokshane Chiram Dadya Viman Boudim Ata Biapadiata Itam Gajendra Sayada Pasan Katam Pranasya Dehi Vivasho Yadrichaya Aparayan Atma Vimokshane Chiram Dadya Viman Boudim Ata Biapadiata Itam Gajendra Sayada Pasan Katam Pranasya Dehi Vivasho Yadrichaya Aparayan Atma Vimokshane Chiram Dadya Viman Boudim Ata Biapadiata the king of the elephants. The king of the elephants. Oh, we switched to English. I've, I've been asked to speak in English, so it's switched. Uh, Saha. Saha. He. he. Yada. Yada. When. when. Apa. Apa. Obtained. Obtained. Sankatan. Sankatan. Such a dangerous position. Such a dangerous position. Pranasya. Pranasya. Of life. Of life. Dehi. Dehi. Who is embodied. Vivashaha, circumstantially helpless. Yadrichaya, by the will of providence. Aparayan, being unable. Atma vimokshane, to save himself. Chiram, for a long time. Dadyo, began to think seriously. Imam, this, this. Buddhim, Buddhim, decision. decision. Atha, Atha. thereupon. Abhya padyata, reached. Translation and commentary by his divine Gashila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. When the king of the elephants saw that he was under the clutches of the crocodile by the will of providence and being embodied, embodied and circumstantially helpless, could not save himself from danger, he was extremely afraid of being killed. He consequently thought for a long time and finally reached the following decision. Purport. Everyone in the material world is engaged in a struggle for existence. Everyone tries to save himself from danger, but when one is unable to save himself, if he is pious, he then takes shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Chatur vida bhajante mam jana sukliti no juna arto jitnya sur artarti jnani cha baratar shabha. Four kinds of pious men, namely one who is in danger, one who is in need of money, one who is searching for knowledge, and one who is inquisitive, begin to take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in order to be saved or to advance. The king of the elephants, in his condition of danger, decided to seek shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. After considerable thought, he intelligently arrived at this correct decision. Such a decision is not reached by a sinful man. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita it is said that those who are pious, Sukriti, can decide that in a dangerous or awkward position, 
one should seek shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. I'm going to read again the verse. When the king of the elephants saw that he was under the clutches of the crocodile by the will of providence and being embodied and circumstantially helpless, could not save himself from danger, he was extremely afraid of being killed. He consequently thought for a long time and finally reached the following decision. So we are reading from uh, Canto 8, chapter 2, text 31. Chapter is called The Elephant Gajendra's Crisis. So, um, as we all know, Gajendra was the king of the elephants in the heavenly planets. He had uh, every facility, every... Well, he was an elephant, but he had every elephant facility and every elephant pleasure an elephant could think of. And uh, suddenly, one day, he um, found himself in a position of danger. He was in a lake and a crocodile started to pull his leg. And as the verse says, he was uh, embodied and he was circumstantially helpless. So, um, in order to be helpless and to be in fear, we have to be embodied, because if we didn't have a body that we had to lose, we wouldn't be fearful. So, he was fearful and he was helpless. Um, none of what he had could help him uh, escape the mouth of the crocodile. And uh, he was extremely afraid of being killed, and he thought for a long time, I guess, as much as, as much a long time you can think when you're about to be eaten. It must still be quite fast. And he finally reached the following decision, which Srila Prabhupada says, to take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he quotes this verse of the Bhagavad Gita, 7.16, where... Um, Krishna explains the four different types of people who surrender to him. The one who is in danger, the one who is in need of money, the one who is searching for knowledge, and the one who is inquisitive. So there is this song, and it was even, it is even the name of uh, Srila Prabhupada um, from Govinda Das. Um, uh, there is this line, Abhaya Charanara Vindare, that uh, without fear at the lotus feet of the Lord. So there is many reasons to be without fear when we are worshipping the Lord. Um, so the, the first one being that the Lord is Ishvara, He has control over this material world and our body being uh, Prakriti, being part of matter, the Lord is also um, in control of that and therefore if he wants to save this body he can save this body Srila Prabhupada used to quote this uh, Bengali saying uh, that says I don't remember the, the Bengali but I remember the English translation that if, so, if someone wants to kill if one person wants to kill someone if Krishna protects that person uh, he can never be killed but if um, Krishna uh, Okay, okay. Uh, if Krishna wants this person to die, no one can uh, protect him. So that's one reason um, why uh, we can surrender to Krishna and be without fear. It is because he has control over Prakriti and over Kala, over Karma. He has control over everything. Uh, that's what God means. He is omnipotent and omniscient. Um, Another reason uh, being that when we surrender to Krishna, we uh, stop gradually, uh, at least not me, but uh, maybe I, I'll reach there one day, we stop identifying with our gross and subtle body, and therefore, uh, because we stop identifying with the body that we are presently in, uh, we stop fearing for the body uh, to be destroyed, because we don't consider it our selves anymore and therefore there is no need to be afraid of anything so that's uh, that's two ways that uh, the lord can uh, remove our fear and he, he speaks about it in the bhagavad gita as well he says that one step in this direction will deliver you from the greatest fear and um, 
So Gajendra, he took the solution of surrendering um, himself to the lotus feet of the Lord and um, the Acharya of uh, surrendering oneself to the Lord Atmani Vedanam, it's uh, Bali Maharaj. And uh, what Bali Maharaj did when Varaha um, came in the area of sacrifice, his spiritual master, <coughs> hmm? Vamana, oh sorry, Vamana, not Varaha. Vamana came uh, to the arena of sacrifice, his spiritual master Shukracharya said, uh, don't give anything to this Brahmana, he's going to take everything from you. But uh, Bali Maharaj, he was thinking that um, I promised uh, my duty is to give um, charity to the Brahmanas, so that is what I am going to do. And uh, as we all know, Bali Maharaj covered the whole universe uh, in two steps, and he said, oh, <laughs> Vamana covered the whole universe in two steps. And, uh, and he said, where should I put my feet now? And Bali Maharaj said, you can put it on my head. Um, so there are many um, examples in the Srimad Bhagavatam and other scriptures of uh, devotees surrendering completely to, um, to the Lord in a time where they are circumstantially helpless and sometimes they do even seek this condition in order to uh, be forced to seek the help of the Lord, um, such as Queen Kunti. She said, I, I hope we will always be in trouble so that we will always think of you and you can come and save us. Because the Pandavas were always in such a big trouble, even though they were the most virtuous people. And sometimes the most virtuous people are not always the one who are uh, in so much peaceful conditions because uh, Srila Prabhupada says that uh, this world also has bad elements and uh, bad elements um, don't mix very well with good elements sometimes and there is a, there is a bit of a fight. Uh, that's, what, that's, that's why the Kurukshetra war happened in the first place. There is the example of uh, Draupadi when she was lost in the gambling um, between the Pandava and um, Duryodhan um, clan. Uh, they brought her in the assembly and in front of the Pandava, um, Dushasan started to undress her. And she thought of taking shelter of her husbands who were there and who were watching, but because they had to abide by the um, bet they, uh, they made, the dice uh, game they lost, they could not do anything. And um, I've heard this in the class, I, I didn't, I searched a little bit, but I didn't get so much time, maybe someone can help. Um, Jopadi was thinking of taking shelter of uh, Yudhishthir, who is Dharma personified. She tried to take shelter of Dharma and uh, Dharma couldn't save her. And uh, so she tried. I, I don't have different persons and uh, corresponding systems of faith. Maybe someone has. No. But anyway, she tried to take shelter of different processes, different persons, and ultimately no one could save her. And so she surrendered herself to Krishna. And then he extended her dhoti, um, uh, sari, her sari infinitely. And uh, so he took, he took care of her, but she had, she had to surrender. And sometimes, uh, at least me, I'm sure, uh, you're all surrendered souls, but sometimes I, I am not, and I think, ah, I'm going to do it my way. And that's why um, conditioned souls come to this material world, because they, they don't want to surrender. Instead of surrendering to Krishna, they surrender to Maya. And uh, when they surrender to Maya, they think that I am the Lord and Master of this world, and I can enjoy it. I can make my own decisions. I don't need to take shelter of anyone. What is there to take shelter of? You're alive, you live, you try to live a nice life, and then when you die, you die. End of the story. There's nothing. And that's even Krishna's point in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, 
even if you think that the body will be um, how to say the body will be vanquished there is nothing to and the soul as well there is nothing to fear because um, it's just matter decay and <coughs> you're not there anymore to be conscious of it so what's what's the fear that has to be there but still <laughs> we can know so much theory and we can think so many things and we can be uh, so much uh, strong materially speaking but when kala uh, catches up and uh, not our kala but time <laughs> when time catches up and uh, it's time to go uh, we we all little bit afraid regardless of uh, what we say and that's when that's when we think that maybe maybe it would be nice to have some shelter because if, even though you think that you you are going to take another body or you think that uh, you're going to die and you're not going to be there anymore uh, the body is the very uh, abode of our existence um, it is um, the field of activity as it's uh, explained in Bhagavad Gita um, and there is the knower of the field that's, that's us, we know the field of activity and the information we gather from our senses both the Karmendriya and the Gyanendriya um, I mean the Gyanendriya the information we gather from our senses and then the way we act through the Karmendriya the, the five senses of action that is the only uh, experience of existence we have right now we don't have any other experience of existing um, than the one uh, that goes through the senses we have and the body when it dies um, Sutra Swami explains um, from a verse I think in the Bhagavatam that says just as when the optic nerve dies and the um, vision is lost uh, when all the senses stop working that is what is called death so when every each of our senses stop working, that's this moment uh, we are dead, we cannot perceive anything anymore um, and that's very fearful because just being in the dark when you are a kid you don't like it, that's why we plug some small lights in the room and uh, so that we can see what's going on where we can go, we don't bump in the bed um, just not knowing, not being able to use one of our senses, it's already uh, very fearful. But having all our senses stop working, that must be terrifying. To not being able to touch something, to see something. And ultimately, all the things we took shelter in this life, um, Srila Prabhupada says, Fiable soldiers. We have um, we take shelter of different kind of soldiers, and uh, ultimately they they all fail to protect us from losing what we have, and uh, and then it starts all over again when uh, when we die. Usually, you see, I mean, maybe I I've seen at least uh, one person. Um, at the end of life, uh, you have regrets. You think, oh, I should have done this. I shouldn't have been doing like that. This was a mistake. If I, was, if I had to start all over again, I would do like this. And if that's what we take shelter of at the time of death, well, we get another chance to build other regrets. <laughs> and then when it's time to die again, we think, oh, I shouldn't have been doing like this. I wanted that. And I never took the chance. And then it starts all over again. And we go up and down from hell to heaven, to earth, to hell, and so on. For millions and millions and millions of life. But maybe one time we are lucky and we see some devotees doing Harinam in the street. And we think, what is this nonsense? But still, <laughs> we get some benefit. 
and uh, it's not millions and millions of lifetimes anymore, it's shorter, depending on how much we decide to actually surrender. Surrender doesn't just mean, in the beginning it can mean just surrendering your intelligence. I think it's, I heard in a class from Tamal Krishna Goswami, he said that you can surrender um, in four ways. You can um, give your intelligence, you can give your money, you can surrender your life, and I don't think I remember the fourth one, but words, or you can give kind words. You can give kind words. Hmm? Your, your time. Yeah, time. But I think, yeah, first is kind words, then it's um, making your intelligence available, then it's giving your money, and then it's giving your life. Um, so, first you can just appreciate. You can think, oh, these devotees, they are very saintly, or they cook nicely, I like their food. So many people, they say that, Hare Krishna, I like their food. That's okay, food is okay. <coughs> and uh, then you can um, make your intelligence available. It doesn't mean that you're going to accept everything, but you can you can um, start to consider that maybe it is interesting. And then once you understood and you give some appreciation, you can, um, can give some money. Money is like, it's the fruit of your karma, it's the fruit of your activities, because most people, they engage in activities to get money in order to do something that is pleasurable to them. So, that is the result of their actions. And instead of directing uh, the result of their actions toward doing something that is going to gratify their senses, as we say, uh, they decide to give it to devotees, give it to Krishna, give it to um, someone who's connected with Krishna. And then, uh, ultimately, um, they decide that they can give up their life and give it to the devotees and to the Guru and, uh, and to Krishna. So, Gajendra went the fast track. He didn't, when he was with the crocodile, he didn't have money or kind words. He just gave himself completely. Um, Bali Maharaj gave everything. He had a big kingdom. He had, same thing, he gave the kingdom, he gave the money he gave the whole universe, and then he gave himself by saying that you can put your feet on my head, um, foot on my head, actually, sorry. Um, so, just checking the time. Um, there are many different, uh, again, many different examples of the Shastra. Um, sometimes, most of the time we say that uh, we get Sukriti from the, the past life when we get in contact with the, with the devotees. And that's why we, we are interested. We have past uh, pious activities um, working for us uh, on, our, on our behalf. Um, so that's why the Krishna Consciousness Movement uh, tries to contact people in every way they can. And it's not that everyone is going to surrender and the temple is going to be Fool, everyone dancing, Harry Ball, Harry Ball. The whole of France, Emmanuel Macron, <laughs> would be nice, but <laughs> Krishna consciousness, just at least that people can appreciate us and uh, maybe give little something. Or, yeah, just appreciation is already very good. And uh, so surrender also means, it doesn't, as I was about to say, it doesn't just mean Surrendering, it also means um, acting, acting on behalf of the, the person we want to please. And so when we surrender to Krishna, uh, Krishna is not an unmoving entity, even though everywhere in the Veda it says that at least Sri Shopanishad and uh, the more philosophical part of the Veda, it says that the Absolute is non-moving, it has legs everywhere, and uh, universal form in the, the Bhagavad Gita as well. 
Um, but Krishna is actually because he's a person and he has desires and because the Guru is the manifestation of Krishna, the Guru engages us and um, gives us activities that both are going to purify us and are going to be beneficial for others. And um, we don't necessarily have bhakti in the beginning. We get bhakti from someone who has bhakti, uh, from the pure devotee. But because the pure devotee engaging, engages us in his service, we can get purified. So seva can be there first and then bhakti, but when bhakti is there, seva is automatically there. there you, cannot, you cannot be devoted without actually doing something. Again, because Krishna is a person, and the Guru is a person. And so when we surrender, we want to do something beneficial for the... In the beginning, I mean, not even in the beginning, but always, it is the spiritual master. We want to please the spiritual master, and if the spiritual master is pleased, um, then Krishna is pleased. And uh, the spiritual master represents... Adi Guru, Nityananda. And so if we, if we please our spiritual master, Nityananda is pleased. And then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu may be pleased. And then it goes up and up. <laughs> but uh, we, have to, we have to know how to surrender. And the Guru is guiding us in this process. Um, because sometimes we do not want to surrender or we are in between. Sometimes we surrender and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we say, okay, I clean the pot, but I don't, uh, I don't know anything. Uh, I don't wash the floor. I clean the pot, but I don't wash the floor. So I surrender, but then I don't surrender. I surrender a little bit. <laughs> and I mean, at least that's what I'm doing. I cannot say that. Every, every hour of the day, I'm thinking how I'm going to be beneficial for the devotees and because we do also surrender to the devotees. Sometimes we think that um, my spiritual master said this, that's what I'm going to do. Temple president says that. Well, he's not the spiritual master. Sorry. <laughs> just going to do, just going to do what my spiritual master told me because I have to surrender to him, not to the temple president. I knew him when he wasn't a devotee. His name was Bhakta Philip. I'm not going to surrender to him. <laughs> but we have to be humble and we don't know who is who we don't know we cannot judge who is the pure devotee because we are still contaminated and uh, if we try to judge well we're going to think that the most pure person is the person that looks like us the most no? <laughs> in general we say oh this person he's, he likes Shastra very much he's, he knows Shastra backward and forward he must be a pure devotee because I like reading Shastras. But, uh, oh, speaking of pure surrender, and at least a lot of surrender, uh, today is the appearance day of His Holiness Vishnu Jan Swami Maharaj. And uh, so maybe we can say at least a little bit something about Vishnu Jan Swami Maharaj. So when he first um, came to the temple, he was, um, he was a hippie. Well, uh, like most of the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. And um, speak? Vishnu Jansami. It's his appearance day today. So he was living in a ranch, um, some hippie community, um, where Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj was <coughs> living as well, actually. They, they already knew each other a little bit. And, um, and uh, he had a wife and one kid. And he delivered the second kid himself, uh, not by uh, going to the hospital or they just did it on the ranch. And, uh, and he used to come uh, to, see the, to hear the lectures of Srila Prabhupada and he used to love the kirtans. But when the class was starting, his girlfriend was there and he was putting his head on her lap and sleeping. <laughs> and then when the class was finished, he would wake up, take prasada. And one, one time Srila Prabhupada said, uh, some people, they come to the temple and they don't take advantage. They are demons. 
And then he said, like this person here, he always comes and when the, start, when the class starts, he sleeps. He's a demon. <laughs> Vishnu Jansom, he heard. And that's when he decided to, to get a little bit serious. And unfortunately, he wanted to be engaged, but his wife didn't want to be engaged so much. So, well, they parted away. And, uh, and there he was. He was a brahmachari and um, he, could, he could chant for 10, 13, 15 hours a day. Devotees say that they would go to sleep hearing Vishnu Jan Swami playing harmonium and they would wake up hearing Vishnu Jan Swami playing harmonium. It's just like the sky. It's always there. And uh, he would wake up, do the Mangala Arati Kirtan, then, I mean, the whole morning program, and he would go outside, chant, they would come back for Prasadam, then he would go outside again, then they would come back for the Arati, and then he would go outside again at night, sometimes up to 1 or 2 p.m. Uh, in Broadway, big streets, and they would sing and sing and sing. And uh, Shida Prabhupada used to say that... Um, my Vishnu Jan Maharaj, he can make the whole world chant Hare Krishna. And uh, yeah, <laughs> he, was, he was a great. There is, um, I don't know, maybe someone still has the recordings. Sometimes devotees speak about it, but there is a pastime when he went into a jail. They asked him to do a program. And, uh, and they had a small church or something, and he did a program there. And he gave a little class, and then he did a kirtan. And apparently, as, as far as you can read it, uh, in Radha Damodar Vilas. When he, st when he started to sing, the, the janitors, they decided to put the, the, the speakers in the, in the jail full volume. And just <laughs> in the whole jail, you could hear the kirtan. And apparently the, the, the prisoners, they, they, they loved it. They started to sing. And the, the, the temple was not far away from the jail. And <laughs> after that program, Devotees would regularly see people coming out of the jail and going directly to the temple to, <laughs> to take some prasadam and, uh, and to hear about him. And um, so he was a very ecstatic devotee and he, he was very good friend with uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj. And they, uh, they made the Radha Damodar traveling Sankirtan party together. And they were very surrendered to, to Srila Prabhupada. Um, they, they would do anything he asked. And uh, Srila Prabhupada often would take him as an example to the other sannyasis. And they, they, he, he would say, why are you staying up in one place and doing something? Just do like Vishnu Jan Maharaj. You take a bus and you go around and you sing. <laughs> depends. Depends which sannyasi sometimes. I have different services, but I remember at least once he said like that. And when t he had a small program with a few, with a few brahmacharis, and uh, actually the Radha Damodar Travelling Sankirtan Party had very ecstatic devotees. There was um, Jayananda Prabhu, who was the temple president um, in San Francisco. Uh, he left the temple presidency and he became the driver of the bus and the mechanic. And uh, Tamal Krishna was there, Maharaj. Um, Vishnu Jan Maharaj was there. Suotra Swami was there. Suotra Swami was there as Sutra Brahmachari at that time. And I've even heard, I didn't read it anywhere, but someone told me uh, that Aindra Prabhu was there at the end of, the, of the, the program. Didn't stay for long, but he was there as well. And uh, they were all fired up devotees. <laughs> fired up devotees. Uh, and they made, they made <coughs> hundreds and hundreds of devotees. You can still hear the... There is a recording of the class uh, Vishnu Jan Maharaj. He had one class for each program in the university. He would repeat it again and again, and you have several recordings, and it's always the, more or less the same lecture that he would give in uh, colleges and universities when they had their programs. And, uh, well, Jayananda Prabhu was another example of surrender, but there are so many examples of surrender, even in ISKCON. And, uh, but because we are there and we are witnessing we think that, oh, I see all the, because we, we are like flies, we see all the bad qualities, but we don't see so much the, the saintly qualities. And in, in one of his lectures, Vishnu, Vishnu Jan Maharaj said that one time I was in the temple and I realized that all the people here are, are saints. 
And it's not so, so, so often that we can look at our fellow devotees and think that he's a big sadhu. <laughs> Sometimes we think, oh, he didn't do like this, and he, he, it was his service, he didn't do that, but actually, we are, I mean, you are all saints, <laughs> and, uh, and because you all surrendered to the desire of your spiritual master, and Srila Prabhupada, and Krishna, and, uh, and it is hard, I mean, we can see, at least it's hard for me, so I can appreciate when someone else surrenders, and even he does it better than me, <laughs> because it's hard to surrender sometimes we just want to surrender to our senses instead of, of the spiritual master and yeah sometimes the spiritual master asks us to do things and it's, it's really hard but we have to surrender and the potency to do the service uh, comes with the order of the spiritual master so that's something we can learn from the story of Gajendra the elephant that um, Sometimes we surrender out of circumstances and sometimes we surrender willfully, but it takes extreme situations sometimes to surrender. It's not something that we do. It's not casual. <laughs> it's not casual. It's not, oh, I surrender a little bit every day. Sometimes circumstances are really pressing. And Krishna, Krishna does that. Uh, Srila Prabhupada used to say that he was thinking of this verse in the Bhagavatam that when Krishna is especially merciful towards his devotee, he takes everything away from him. And uh, that's what he remembered when he took sannyas because his business failed, family life failed. It's not that the devotee necessarily wants to give everything up. He can take everything as a service. But sometimes Krishna gives and sometimes Krishna takes. <laughs> and we do not know, we have to accept sometimes, yeah, it's, that is like that. So, Hare Krishna, I'm going to stop here, maybe there are some questions or remarks, complaints. You can read again. can read again the verse. When the king of the elephants saw that he was under the clutches of the crocodile by the will of providence and being embodied and circumstantially helpless, could not save himself from danger. He was extremely afraid of being killed. He consequently thought for a long time and fin finally reached the following decision. No, well, I can just say a little. Well, he reached the following de decision, as we said, because he had a little bit of security and that he, he, he could come to the following decision that he's going to surrender unto God because sometimes it doesn't even come to the mind of, of people that uh, why would I surrender to God? Uh, even if I'm suffering, I'm just going to come out of it. We like the stories of... Uh, they always make movies out of it, but um, the person, how do you say? Underdog? I think that's how they say it. The person who is at the very bottom and then he fights, he fights, he fights, and then out of success, he, he finally succeeds in, uh, in his... Uh, endeavors and then he has everything he wants and and uh, that's even the american dream no that's, that's the american dream that you come there you have nothing you're a poor immigrant and then you sell some pizza or you do <laughs> something and you become like big big man and you have everything you want that's uh, that's the story in the material world but even when you have everything you want you don't have everything you want <laughs> There's always something you want that you don't have. <laughs> there is a. It's from my university. It's just a small humorous story. But there was a man. He was um, he was from England. He was terrible at business, and he was just eccentric, plain eccentric. Like he would send gloves to Hawaii in the middle of the summer. It's completely eccentric, but by some goodwill of karma, he. He always came out more rich, like some, some Portuguese sailors, they would come and they would go to Alaska and they didn't need the gloves. And so he sold all his packaging of gloves to the um, Portuguese sailors. And he, he had a crazy luck like this, but even though he was very rich and a little bit eccentric and uh, he, his wife didn't like him at all. And even though he could get more and more rich, do more and more things and... and uh, 
yeah, there's always something missing. <laughs> you can you can be successful in uh, some area, but some other area won't work. It's even even though you're very 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 successful at something, it may not be the thing that you want to be successful at. It's just, but Krishna, he is everything and he has everything. So when we surrender, that's when that's when we are satisfied, because that's our nature to be missing something, but we do not know that what we are missing is Krishna. We think we are missing, yeah, something else. <laughs> Finished? It's not nine exactly, but uh, I see. Looks. Uh, oh, yes? yes? I think the gender is one of the classic examples, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, this I do not know. That would be interesting yeah. to. Know. Yeah, like for the Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, there's also. Yeah. yeah. So the one who's suffering is Gajendra. Gajendra. And the one who wants money is Durga. Like he wants oh, he wants the kingdom. He yeah. wants the big kingdom, but he's yeah. an the earth. Yeah. So he has that material desire. Mm-hmm. And then the other two are very humble. <laughs> but there is this classic yeah. example. The one who is curious? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, distress is Gajendra, but that's Druva, and then there's the the person who's uh, who wants to know the absolute truth, and there is a curious. Yeah. Maybe I mean we can come up with so many examples, but it's it may be the one that we wouldn't know. <laughs> okay. I think it comes from anywhere from the Oh, it's from uh, Burijan, yeah, surrender. Yeah. Oh, in the Bhagavad Gita, yeah. Burijan. That's a really good book. That's uh, that's an amazing book. If you, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's amazing book from Burijan Prabhu, to know the the Gita a little bit more in depth. Very good book. Okay. Hi, Krishna. Oh. Hmm? There are six symptoms. Yeah. There's a list of six symptoms yeah. of surrender. This I do not know. No, I don't know them either. But I know that only two is one is accepting everything favorable. Yeah. Rejecting everything unfavorable. It's in nectar of devotion? Yeah. No, it's private. But we know that because Anukulas is Ankalpam, Pratikulas is Avadjana. Akshishati is Vishwaso. Go to Sade Sharanam. Sorry, I didn't get the time to prepare so much, so it would have been better if I prepared a little bit. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki. It's missing a little bit of shlokas, I have to learn them. <laughs> 